What's up guys, this is Crypto with James talking to you today about effectively the trends that are happening and but more than that really I want to talk draw some parallels between what's happening with crypto right now and what's happened with previous moments in financial history. Um because things are moving rapidly with crypto and they have done for the past 12 years. So I, I well and I really sort of want to look at where we're at right now and compare it before i do as always i update the spreadsheet these are the first 26 coins i spoke about in the channel that i thought would just smash it in this bull cycle you invested 100 bucks into each one when i released the videos and you're still holding the bags you'd be in profit for 79 grand add in the 2600 you invested you'd be sitting on 81,600. i've held them all and i've closed positions on them all and i've reinvested the money into new cryptos and if you want to see what i'm in you can check out a copy of my crypto my portfolio is outperforming the market week in and week out. My gains of, um, like I said, you know, outperform the market. Um, my biggest holdings are ready for some explosion. My smaller holdings offer some really nice opportunities for not only quick flips, but um, some long-term prospects as well. Um, I say it every time, the bull cycle is going to come to an end, whether it's two, you know, a month, two months, three months, four months. Um, and when that does, that's the time where your investments matter most. The bear cycle coins will retrace 70, 80, 90% in value. And that's an opportunity to find projects truly undervalued. That's all I do during a bear cycle. It's where I found Phantom. And that's up 504 times in value. And during the bear cycle, all I'll be doing is sharing with a couple of my crypto members the, uh, the key coins that I'm getting into that are hugely undervalued. So if you want to be a part of it, you can check it out. Um, all right, so we're going to see a lot of these articles over the course of time. So Ukraine wants to become the capital, the crypto capital of the world. Now, there's a phenomenal book that I recommend people have a look at. It's called um, The Deals That Made the World. And it runs through the history of a number of deals. Now, one thing in particular that really interested me um was uh paypal and the origins of paypal and how um the amount of difficulty they had with uh the founders and creators of paypal had with your regular financial institutions because it was like jesus christ this is changing the system and everyone was against it um but paypal resulted in effectively the first step towards what we ended up with with um Apple Store and and through that Apple Store had deals with, um, I think it was, was J P Morgan, Morgan Stanley. I can't remember, um, and that sort of situation that happened with PayPal, where they really had to rally against financial institutions. We've seen with Bitcoin and crypto generally. Now we're still sort of at a similar point, particularly within America, but is lessening over time and it will do and sooner or later there'll just be boom some big deals happening um and it's a situation of adapt or die um and venture capital companies have realized that and i'll go into that in a sec um and something else that happened historically is when tax havens began there was because now we know that there are certain countries that people go to or certain places people or companies go to to minimize their tax threshold. You know, you look at um, Cayman Islands as the best example. Um, and that started through the British government and through the Bank of England, representative of the Bank of England, realizing that a way to uh, get big business to participate in the British economy to bring to bring their businesses to the British economy was to provide them with an offset um, financially. So the offset was much more minimal tax because they use a common law structure uh, to work around that. And that's why Cayman Islands is very much a good place if you're a com corporation. Um, and this is what we're starting to see with crypto now. So like you say, in Ukraine, passed a law legalizing and regulating Bitcoin um but they're looking at bringing it through as a um as a place where your companies your start your crypto company startups go there 
there's going to be tax offsets inevitably um, because you've got to give people reason to to move a business over or to start setting up a business. Um, and they've said, you know, the Deputy Minister um, for Digital Transformation has said that they believe it's the new economy, it's the future, and it's something that will boost their economy, and they want it to be one of the top jurisdictions in the world for crypto companies. Um, so he did like a 90-second infomercial that Ukraine... Uh, that peddles Ukraine the same way that Apple ped peddles gadgets. Um, and the whole purpose, like I've said, is to get that growth for a country, to bring that competition, to bring that ec ec economical boost to your country. And we're going to see this more and more and more and more. Um, and it's worthwhile knowing these things and seeing which countries are really pushing for um, to become the home of these hubs, of the, of the crypto hub, whether it's specifically to do with startups, whether it's to do with um, venture capital investment, hedge fund type groups, um, because it has an impact on a country's economy. You know, Cayman Islands, before it became the tax haven that it was, was literally a country of fishermen and very little else. Banks were set up to provide tax loopholes. And it started with, you know, drug dealers. Escobar ended up being the biggest um, contributor to the Cayman Islands for years. Um, and then banks, uh, and, then, uh, and then your companies started using it. And we might see a similar sort of reflection of that to some degree within crypto. You know, we might get some dodgy ass companies or whatever starting off in particular places. I'm not saying that's going to happen in Ukraine, but what we are going to see is multiple companies trying out multiple different countries to find the ideal place to set up. But from there, it's going to tell you a couple of things about the prospect of a crypto business. Because down the line, if they are setting up in, or if they're some of the ones that are setting up in those key tax havens or loopholes, that then the public, com if it's a public company, it's going to go up in value. Inevitably, it's going to go up in value. Um, in Poland, Ukraine, Lithuania, Estonia, Malta, Mexico, Thailand, Vietnam are all in the race at the moment for... Um, for trying to become this the crypto hub and it is really worthwhile knowing this stuff because again like i said you're gonna there's gonna be opportunities for private companies you know they go public on nasdaq they go public on um you know they, they end up being um in any of the top exchanges all of a sudden there's there's huge potential there as, uh, as a as a company to invest in and there's huge potential potentially for just their native crypto if they've got a blockchain, a layer one blockchain, an NFT based project. You know, these things matter. Um, and it's just we're in that level now where the adoption's increasing and increasing and increasing. And we're seeing the transformation or the future transformation of countries and of industries. You know, another article that's come up in the last day was Adapt or Die, you know, Venture Capital versus Crypto Blockchain, DAOs and Web 3.0. And venture capital groups realize they can't just sit and use the existing financial structures because that's not bringing the gains comparatively. You know, you look at a top tier crypto project and look at the venture capital groups. I mean, I mean even then it doesn't have to be a new project. You look at the existing ones, any of those cryptos in the top 100, you have a look and you'll have huge hedge funds or huge venture capital groups behind them because they know the gains long-term have huge potential. And Web 3.0 is the thing behind it. DAOs as well, no doubt DAOs as well, but Web 3.0 is where a lot of venture capitals are starting to go because they can get in early doors, private sales or seed sales means their money's locked up for a long time or their funds are locked up for a long time, but 
as a great example, venture capital, huge amount of venture capital groups got into Uniswap. And right now, if they could get hold of all their funds, they'd be making billions from their initial investments. Um, and this is it. I mean, an example of a venture capital group that's leaning into the new form of contribution is uh, Andreas Horowitz. They've got a $2.2 billion crypto fund. Um, and they actively invest in um, projects that they think have huge potential. Because fundamentally, it's like when you're going for a 100x investment, right? You can get 90 of them wrong. You can get 99 of them wrong. Because if one lands, you're in profit. And there's so much potential for some of these to do those gains. Um, so if you're the kind of person that start, that's going, I want to have my money invested into a hedge fund or a VC, then look at where they're going. Because if they're sticking with the standard financial markets, the gains are not going to be as good as some of these new uh, 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 of the venture capital groups that are just ready to go in a space that will only grow over time. Even when there's a bear cycle, that's a temporary role. You know, it's a cyclical market, but it's temporary. But long-term perspective shows that this is something that's going to grow and grow and grow and disrupt industry after industry after industry. Case in point, crypto gaming. You know, how much money can it absorb in the near future? It's a genuinely very good question, but You've got to realize, like, right now, we're seeing huge amounts of um, money going into crypto gaming infrastructure. So Coinbase is obviously started putting in, but we've got Patreon raised a 90 million fund to invest in crypto-based games. Mythical Games raised 75 million in the summer to build crypto games. A trading card game called Parallel raised 500 million dollar valuation. Axie Infinity raised around earlier this year. Forte raised 725 million for its crypto gaming infrastructure. And this is what I mean when I'm talking about how we're at a point where all of us are still early. If you actually look at the amount of people in the world that are investing in crypto, it's still about 5% of the world. And the irony is, is that this is the only market where anyone can invest at any point 24 hours a day. You know, most people, if they want to invest in the stock market, you've got to get a bloody, you've got, you've got to go to get someone to, you know, a broker to then pay to do that. You know, I know there's, there's obviously other ways and you can do it through certain websites, da, 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 Toro, whatever, you know, there's plenty of different sites that you can do it through. But this is one of the most open and constantly tradable markets. So it's staggering that it's still such a small percent. It shows how early everyone is here. Um, and bear in mind, the, crypt, the gaming industry right now um, is staggeringly high. So let's have a look at what that is. So the gaming industry in 2020 was valued at $173.7 billion. $173.7 billion. And expected to reach a valuation of around 314 billion by 2026. I would wager it will be more than that. But 300 billion by 2026. Now, again, if you can then go, I don't know, and we'll go by categories based on, um, and we'll just we'll have a look at gaming for a second. What the hell? It's so gaming. So the market cap of crypto of tokens within crypto gaming right now, 34.8 billion. Now, a key point here. This valuation is based on anyone that's playing Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, whatever, right? None of them beyond the, you know the professionals, none of them are earning money. Crypto gaming offers play to earn models. People can earn money playing games. So there is potential for this to go so big. And the sort of point I'm trying to get to is that 
we're so early in this space, even though it's you know it's been around a decade more, but we're now starting to see the level of disruption that it can provide, or the level of of, of change it could cause. So, whether it's which country is going to become a tax haven, how are venture capital groups going to start adapting to make sure that they provide the profits required, or What's going to be an area that can grow hugely over time? And again, one point I would make, artificial intelligence is an area where we have barely touched the surface. Artificial intelligence right now is present in a multitude of areas within our lives. And We've got a couple good projects in crypto around AI. There's a few. I took it three. Two, two that I like, but three in general. Um, and this is only going to be a sector that grows. And that's going to be a detriment to a lot of people and a positive to a lot of people. So then, looking at the trend that's coming, you've got to look at who's going to be, or what cryptos potentially are going to be at the fore this look at who's being who's investing what companies are investing in these blockchain based crypto or ai projects and there's so many areas that we're just we've barely touched on i just yeah and i i really recommend you know when you're seeing things play out and it's reflecting history and you saw how history played out it gives you decent insights to how things will move. Really do recommend people check that book out. Deals that made the world. It's fantastic. Um, and it's, like I said, you can look at historical, how the history of a number of different deals played out. And we're seeing mirror images in a lot of ways within crypto. And knowing how those situations played out, it gives you an insight as to how these are going to play out. Just time frame is the only matter. Um, but yeah, we're all early. We're all early. Um, here's a question. What do you guys think? Which country do you think, guys, will be the crypto capital of the world? Hard question to answer. But where do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, this is just me really talking be honest um because the market's a bit flat today and i want to talk about something um like this so yeah <laughs> um if you need to crypto check i'll copy my crypto is where i share my portfolio my portfolio keeps outperforming the market uh gains have been very very nice and like i said and i always say this bear cycles coming bank profits throughout this bull cycle yeah don't try and get out the top one in a million people do it and it's probably by luck rather than skill so try and get out or bank consistent profits. You'll sleep very well and just prep. Get your money prepped because the bear cycle kicks in. Everything will be hugely undervalued and you'll be able to find the best projects with the best chance of success. Hugely undervalued. That's all I do during the bear cycle and that's exactly what I'll be sharing with everyone on Copy My Crypto. And if you want to be a part of it, you can check it out. Anyway, take it easy, guys. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Bye-bye.